Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. It's time for another mini PC review. We've got a beefy one here from Minix, and I like the Minix stuff quite a bit. It's always well built. This is their Elite ER936. It's got an AMD Ryzen 9 365 processor on board. And we're going to take a look and see what this mini PC is all about here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Minix sent this to the channel free of charge. However, no other compensation was received. They have not reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this mini PC is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at around $820 with a coupon, definitely on the higher end of the mini PCs that we look at. Again, it's got that Ryzen AI9 365 processor. It's got 10 cores. The GPU that's built into that processor is pretty powerful, as you'll see in a little bit, at least for a mini PC. This one also has uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 5600 RAM. You can upgrade it to 96 gigabytes, and it has a one terabyte NVMe SSD. I was impressed with how easy it is to get into this. There's no screws. It's all uh, basically toolless. So what you can do is pull up the bottom panel here, the metal panel. It's got a dust filter on it that you can clean out pretty easily here. And then underneath it, you do have some screws, but they've got these little handles on it so that you can get into the area where the storage and the RAM is located. So a little bit earlier, I did uh, take those screws out. It does take a little bit of time to unscrew them. And there's another panel here that you remove. And from there, you can do your upgrades. So you can see the Wi-Fi card on the right there. You've got your 32 gigs of RAM that come pre-installed on this along with your NVMe. There's also a second NVMe slot, so you can add more storage to the mix as well. Now it has a decent selection of ports on it. You have two 40 gigabit per second USB Type-C ports. These are USB 4, which means they're compatible with Thunderbolt. These will do display output also, both on the front here and on the back. So you do have a good amount of display output options here. And according to the specs, it can do 8K at 60 hertz. I don't have an 8K display, but my 4K displays work great uh, off of the internal ports here. So you definitely have some port flexibility. This does not support power in though. You do need to use the included power adapter, but you get display out and your 40 gigabit per second Thunderbolt compatible USB-C port there. Two USB-A ports here running at 10 gigabits per second. You got your headphone microphone jack here conveniently on the front. On the back, you have dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet. I did test that ethernet a little bit earlier and we were able to get the full speed out of those ports, both on the downstream here and on the upstream. So all performed as expected. You've got another 10 gigabit per second USB-A port here, a display port and HDMI out, and then your second USB-C uh, 40 gigabit per second port that again can do the display output. The power supply goes in here. It is a little on the larger side. This uh, mini PC will consume up to about 100 watts in my testing running under full load. It idles at around 10 to 12 watts, so not all that power consuming when it's not under load. And you've got a 120 watt power supply here to give you some power budget if you've got some things plugged into those USB ports. You also got yourself a Kensington lock here so you can lock it down on a desk and there is a Visa mount in the box as well. Here you've got your radiator for the processor. It does have a fan on board, but it's not all that loud. It really only kicks on when you place it under heavy sustained load. That's when that fan will kick on. It is audible. It's not all that uh, loud, but it definitely is heard. And if you are someone who's susceptible to fan noise under load, this one is not quiet. Um, but again, it's not a wind tunnel either. Now it ships with a fully activated version of Windows 11 Pro. That is common across many of these mini PCs that we have tested, and I found the performance here to be very good. This is a very powerful processor. This is one of the Strix line of these AMD chips, and it performs exceptionally well, both for basic tasks like doing web browsing here, along with gaming and other things that we'll check out in a minute. So I see no issues getting day-to-day -day work done on this. And as I'm browsing the web here and just playing around with some basic tasks, the fan is not kicking on either it is quite efficient. A little bit earlier, I did test out its YouTube capabilities. We were playing back some 4K60 content from my channel, and it did drop a couple of frames. You'll see that frame drop here in a second. 
So it wasn't perfect, but I didn't really notice the frame drop. So it was able to keep up, and I would imagine future driver updates should improve things a bit. But again, I didn't notice any stuttering or anything that was concerning on the media consumption side. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 33. That puts this machine right up there at the top and in line with other current generation processors from AMD and Intel. Now, one of the advantages of this AMD processor is its graphical capabilities. I did a bunch of video editing tests using DaVinci Resolve a little bit earlier with some 4K 60 video footage. And as you can see there, it was able to handle a transition in real time without uh, much issue here. But I was also impressed with how quickly it could process more advanced video effects uh, certainly a lot faster than I've seen with other mini PCs. So it's not immediate, of course. A desktop PC with a large GPU will do a lot better, but it was able to bring in video effects relatively quickly. It was able to preview those effects without a lot of lag or slowdown, and I could pile them on top of each other here, as you can see, and it was responding quite well to that. So I think it's a little better than the basics here. Again, not quite as good as a robust gaming laptop or desktop, but the graphical performance on this device is pretty impressive as you will see as we continue our way through the review here. Now these mini PCs are also getting a lot better at running local language models. Basically you can spin up your own chat GPT that runs on your local hardware. These won't rival what you can do with a commercial service in the cloud, but they're getting closer every day. What I've done here is I've loaded up AMD's application called Gaia, and this links up with another thing called Lemonade that it installs when you get everything up and running. And this will actually work with the GPU built into this AMD processor. So it runs a lot faster than Olama does on this hardware. And what I'm gonna do here is use the OpenAI open source model here, the 20 billion parameter version. And I asked it to write me a story about a retro, game, a retro YouTuber that goes back in time to review retro gadgets. And what you'll see here as this is running is that we're making full use of that GPU uh, right over here. Uh, to process this, and the speed here is pretty good. It's, it's certainly a lot quicker than it was running in Olama with the same uh, language model, so we are able to get some decent speed out of it. And again, these local models are not as good as the cloud models, but they're getting better and better every day, and there are some things that run quite well locally. So if you were thinking about using this as a server and having some AI locally process things with N8N or something, I think this is certainly something to consider. And this uh, Lemonade server that is running all of this in the background is compatible with the OpenAI API. So you can point all of your applications at it and have it make use of that local model. But pretty cool stuff here that you can get all of this stuff running locally. You'll note, though, that it's using the GPU and not the MPU. But there are some things in Windows that will take advantage of that MPU. But of course, the GPU is just much more powerful for these types of language tasks. All right, let's take a look at some gaming now. I've got Cyberpunk 2077 running on our device here. We have it set to the low settings at 1080p. And we're getting between 45 and 55 frames per second. Not quite 60, but certainly close to it. And in more complex areas, of course, it does slow down a bit, but you can see the GPU here is the bottleneck. We've got plenty of CPU overhead to go. So I would imagine if you plugged in an external GPU that was more powerful, you might be able to squeeze some more out of this thing. Um, but still, great performance here for a very demanding title running at 1080p. I'm not sensing much in the way of lag or slowdown here, so this is pretty cool. Let's take a look at one other game. So here we've got No Man's Sky. This is running at 1080p at the standard settings, which is the equivalent of low. And we're hovering around 60 frames per second here on the ground. It's a little lower than 60, but close enough. Uh, and we can hop into my spaceship here and see if the frame rates improve as things get less complex. And of course we can hop in the uh, driver's seat here and go for a ride. And overall, this is definitely performing way better than many mini PCs we have looked at in the not so distant past. Uh, now that we're in the spaceship, we're doing about 80 frames per second. So great performance here out of the internal GPU for games that are not all that old. And on the 3D Mark Times by Benchmark test, we got a score of 3,504. Graphically, this is close to what we've seen out of desktop GPUs from not all that long ago. You can see we're lining up favorably with a GTX 1060 and a GTX 1650. And of course, we've got all of that computational horsepower 
at work here as well. So overall, a very nicely performing system that is relatively efficient in delivering that performance. We also ran the 3D Mark stress test. There we got a score of 99.3%. So that cooling fan, while it can get a little bit loud when everything spins up, it is able to keep the system running consistently, even under heavy sustained load. All right, one last thing to check out here, and that is its Linux performance. I booted up the most recent version of Ubuntu here, and everything seems to be working just fine. The Wi-Fi was detected properly, along with the Ethernet, and of course the audio is working along with the visuals as well. And I can go visit my blog here and see how fast everything pops up. So Linux seems to be running just as well as Windows does. And what's fun about this machine and some of the other mini PCs we've looked at is that now with two NVMe slots, you can install Windows on one drive and Linux on the other and be able to dual boot into both. Uh, this one, of course, will make a very nice server. If you've got a lot of strenuous home server tasks that you want to do as well, you can spin up your favorite flavor of Linux and have at it. So all in here, uh, good performance on both Windows and Linux. So altogether, I'm very impressed with what Minix has put together here. They are one of the more reputable brands in this space. They make some really nice hardware and have been making this nice hardware for quite some time. So this is one that I'm comfortable recommending. So if you're looking for a higher end mini PC that performs well, uh, this one is definitely worth taking a look at. I think they've got a few other configurations that might have more powerful processors available as well. That will do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.